Hello students, this is Mr. Owl. Welcome to your first YouTube tutorial lesson. I'm making these so that A, you have a chance to take in the content at your own pace, and B, so that you can look at them again if you need to review it, or if you manage, happen to be a way that you can use this as a guide so you don't get too far behind what we're doing in class. In this short tutorial, we're gonna be thinking about the Greenfoot grid, and a little bit about grid space and programming in general. You notice on the side here that I have a Greenfoot test project opened up. I haven't added anything into it yet, but I want to pop open our My World class and take a peek at it really quick. Recently, we looked at the numbers in what we call our My World constructor. We haven't talked a lot about constructors yet, but the basic idea is kind of in the definition of the word itself. It helps construct the object. It is called when the object is created and tells it what its initial state is going to be. In this case, we learned that the numbers inside these brackets determine the size of the world that we create. If I was to half this number to 300 and 200, the world would be half the size of the one that it automatically populates with 600 and 400. We played around with that a little bit in Greenfoot. And now we want to take a look at exactly what this means and how to make sense of these numbers using, using actual grids. So we're going to dive into Microsoft Paint here, and I'm going to take out my beautiful, beautiful designed title here. Now, when speaking of grids, what we're used to talking about, and you have to forgive my bad art here, I'm gonna do the best I can with this mouse, is the Cartesian plane that we use in math class. And you're used to thinking of things extending off this way as being positive, upwards from the origin is positive as well, to the left and down as being negative. This is something that we use in the world of mathematics. But we're not in the world of mathematics right now, despite what you may think in programming. We're in our own domain, using its own set of rules for how we label the coordinates of this system. To really get a good sense of it, I can actually use Paint to see this really clearly. I'm going to jump over here into View and turn on the grid lines and the rulers. And you'll see that we have some lovely labels at the top and along the side. And what you might see in the top left corner is that we begin in the top left at zero horizontally and also, it's not quite labeled very clearly, but it definitely is zero vertically. The top left corner of the page is zero, zero. And as we move to the right, we increase horizontally. And as we move downwards, we increase vertically. That's the weird one to kind of wrap up in your mind. Down means increasing in number. The bigger number you get, the further down the page or the world you will end up. I've created a grid that's 500 by, if I scroll down here, 500, it pops off my page a little bit. Any type of world, world will work. I just wanted to show this as an example. And when I'm in this world, I can consider constructing a shape of some kind. I'm gonna make it as small as I can. I'm gonna try and make it from 100, just follow my ruler down here, horizontally and 100 vertically, right about there. And I'm gonna drag it till it's 100 more units down to the 200 and 100 more units to the side, to the 200 over here. Getting it kind of roughly lined up, it doesn't have to be perfect for this example here. I'll snap it in there. And now I've created a pretty confident square with all four sides being the same length of 100 each. So I know some things about this square that I have on the page. One is that each side is 100 units in length and also it's the location of each of its corners. The first corner is located at 100 in the y value and 100 in the x value. The second corner, 100 in the y value, 200 in the x value. The third corner, 100 in the x value, 200 in the y value. Finally, 200 in the y and 200 in the x. When we jump into creating shapes in Greenfoot, we're going to need to know the location of each of these corners and how to talk about them using the coordinate plane. Lovely circles there. And But for now, we just want to get familiar with the fact that we're moving positively to the right and positively down. Just wanted us to get a better intuitive sense about what that's looking like and how those numbers correlate to stuff in our next lesson. Something I also want us to kind of recap before I'm done this video is in Greenfoot, we've been creating objects, crabs and wombats and, and the like. I'm just going to create a simple, beautiful, artistic image of a person. And let's pretend this is an object in our game that we programmed to use the move method. 
um, we talked a little bit about in class how the move method means that it is actually teleporting on the screen to a new location. It's not moving fluidly like we do in the real world. It's actually teleporting based on the number of units we define it to. Now this scale is a little bit big to see it really clearly, but let's say that I had said move 50 at right around the center of it's right around the 100 marker right now. If I said move 50, the next time the program is called, this would jump immediately over to roughly 150. It would make that instantaneous jump without any of the in-between spots. Maybe a better way to think about this is to think of a flip book. I'll pop one up here. We've all seen flip books before where there's individual pictures drawn and then if you flip the pages fast enough, it kind of tricks our eye into thinking that it's a movie being played or a, an image that's continuous that we can track and follow along. And when that act method is running in Greenfoot, it's kind of like the speed at which you flip the pages. If you flip these slow enough, whoever watching can very distinctly tell that there's individual drawings side by side. But if you flip it fast enough, it's really hard to tell the individual images and it tricks our eye into thinking that it's a video playing. The same principle applies when we're working in our programs, with our, particularly with our move method, but other methods as well. If our program is operating fast enough, or if our moves are small enough in their jumps, our eye won't be able to pick up on these little teleports, and we'll, it'll have the appearance of the object moving fluidly around the screen in whatever way it is that we want it to for the functionality of our game. All right. Hopefully that gives you a good rundown of the coordinate system and also a bit more about how objects move relative to the methods that we've created for them. See you in the next video.